Okay. <coughs> Gembira, penat, a little sad. Kenapa sedih? Jangan sedih sedih. kita teruskan lagi a uh, very simple apa nama a very simple uh, tajuk hari ini semalam kita dah buat centripetal acceleration jadi hari ini kita akan buat centripetal force it is not that difficult sebab kita dah belajar centripetal acceleration jadi uh, sambungan daripada centripetal acceleration kita akan buat centripetal force sedikit kata-kata semangat the struggle you are in today is It's not developing, alama. This is developing, developing the strength uh, you need tomorrow. Okay. Jadi uh, saya nak buat sedikit revision uh, berkenaan kita punya centripetal acceleration. Where yesterday kita already derived centripetal acceleration, where centripetal acceleration is equal to tangential velocity to the power of two divided by radius. This one is in terms of tangential velocity or else we can also use in terms of omega where centripetal acceleration is equal to radius time with the omega to the power of two. Okay, question. The moon's nearly circular orbit around the Earth has a radius of about 3.8 times 10 to the power of 5 kilometer and a period of 10, 27 days. So determine the centripetal acceleration the moon towards the earth. Okay, you can start calculating. Jadi dekat sini memang uh, the, the, the direct information that given in the question is the radius itself. But kita kena kira, kita kena cari the angular velocity. Uh, jadi angular velocity ni datangnya daripada period of 27 days. Uh, kalau you still ingat our first lecture, uh, kita boleh calculate the angular velocity by using the period ataupun the time pula. Okay, I'll wait another 30 second maybe. Maybe I have the ni lah. Oh, laju betul lah. Sudah nak ayat satu ni. Senang orang je Most of you answer it correctly. Cuma ada beberapa yang silap, maybe uh, didn't change the kilometer to the meter. So you have to convert them in meter and also this in second. Uh, so ada yang silap dengan function maybe. Okay, five seconds left. So kita tengok jawapan. Muhammad ni dia tulis apa? Dia tak tulis apa-apa pun. Muhammad HA1. Sekejap. Saya punya skrin ni dia macam tak. Okay. So Muhammad dia tak tulis apa-apa. Next. Lennon 69.19. Two seven eight or ten or forty two eight three four ten ten. Ah, yeah, ini. I think this one might be correct. Two seven eight ten or negative three. 
and the unit is meter per second square. I mean, I think got it. Correct. Uh, range are maybe a bit salah sebab kita nak uh, range are kita nak apa nak jadi kita ingat centimeter expression the unit mesti meter per second square. Daniel Aiman correct. Ahmad Farhan okay. Maldia pun okay. So saya akan tunjuk dia punya solution. Okay so di mana uh, we have uh, secara terang-terangannya obviously kita boleh tahu uh, uh, from the question given is 3 to the power of 5 but this one question bagi dalam kilometer so you have to convert it into meter jadi you have to darabkan dengan 1000 ataupun 10 to the power of 3 lah then the radius in meter is 3.84 times 10 to the power of 5 meter okay and the second one that uh, to calculate the centripetal acceleration is we need the angular velocity but in this question the angular velocity is actually to this statement a period a period of 27 days so if you still remember uh, selain daripada selain daripada omega uh, yang kita kira that omega is the changes in the angular displacement divided by the time kita juga ada formula of omega is equal to 2 pi darabkan dengan the frequency all right so uh, frequency it has a relation with the period which is equal to 1 over the period Jadi kita boleh form this equation untuk cari angular velocity where 2 pi is equal to 1 or 2 pi uh, omega is equal to 2 pi over the period. But the period is 27 days. So you have to convert this to the second. So 27 days, one day ada 24 hours. Jadi we darab 24 hours convert it into uh, minutes, 60 minutes, and then another one for 60 seconds. Okay, jawapan dia adalah, boleh calculate dengan saya? 24 times 60 times 60. Berapa? 233800. <laughs> 2.33 times uh, 10 to the power of, is it? Dia juta, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yep, correct. To the power of 6 seconds. All right. Then um, we have uh, we have the time already in second. Jadi we just sub into the angular velocity where angular velocity is equal to 2 pi divided by Jadi uh, we form our ascent, uh, centripetal acceleration. And we use okay. omega here. Jadi we use the centripetal acceleration that related to omega, where centripetal acceleration is equal to radius times with the omega to the power of two. Okay. Jadi the radius is just now kita dapat 3.84 times 10 to the power of uh, eight. Sebab tadi kita dah tukar kepada meter kan. Jadi darabkan dengan 1000 jadi kuasa lah and our angular velocity now is 2 pi 2.33 times 10 to the power of 6. Okay, this one is radian per second. Eh? Okay, jadi our this one is to the power of 2, then our centripetal acceleration is equal to anyone, boleh kira 2 pi divided 2 by 2.79 to the power of negative 3. Lupa dah. Angular is second square. But centripetal acceleration. Apa dia? Yes, meter per second. Alright. So, uh, hari ni kita dah tahu apa. Itu centripetal acceleration. Acceleration memang apa nama, uh, it's always some radius but you kena cari the angular velocity. So it's a lot of example yang saya bagi semalam. Uh, banyak jenis penara lah. Alright. Farhan boleh tak tolong uh, mute mic sebab saya rasa dengar noise. Okay, thank you. Next.
so hari ni dah belajar AC, dah faham buat is centripetal acceleration. Jadi we will proceed our dynamics part of the rotational motion. I will introduce you guys with the centripetal force. And uh, this is not, sekejap eh, saya kena betulkan sedikit. Okay, uh, and for, for today's lecture, we will derive and use the equation for centripetal force, acceleration to centripetal force. Alright, next. What centripetal force is? Centripetal acceleration is acceleration that always pointing to the center. Jadi force pun sama lah, the force that always pointing to the center. So a centripetal force is a net force that acts on an object to keep it moving along a circular path. Maksudnya dengan adanya this centripetal force, the object will move in a circular path and then centripetal force juga uh, membolehkan lah uh, it is a move in the, in the circular motion. Jadi what will happen to the object if there is no centripetal force? Tiba-tiba centri, centripetal force ni hilang. Adakah objek itu masih bergerak secara, bu, secara membulat? <coughs> Adakah ia bergerak seperti ini? And then semakin lama semakin mengecil ataupun dia bergerak di other way round. Anyone kalau nak guess? Straight line. Straight line. Lagi? Uh, ada yang kata straight line. Straight line maybe dia ke sana ke? Uh, dia ke sana ke? Lagi? Sama eh? Alright, it's okay. Uh, kita tengok next. Okay, what happen if the centripetal force tu tak ada? So, saya ada buat satu video ni, then I just uh, attach a ball with a string uh, ataupun with a rope and then I just uh, buatlah secara membulat and then uh, when it go in the circular path or circular motion and suddenly I just want to release, release the rope so that I remove the centripetal force punya part and what will happen to the ball is, okay, I will show you the part where I just release the rope and we can see that the ball move to the, uh, it it move towards ke atas, uh, dia akan ke atas macam tu bila saya lepaskan the rope. So then we know that dia, dia, dia bergerak dengan linearly, then bila dia gerak atas, then dia terus bawah due to the gravitational force lah. Okay, so uh, let me explain why. Okay, Newton's first law, kita tahu, kita belajar, is an object that will continuously moving along a straight path unless acted by by a, by an external force. So, uh, in this case, kalau adanya centripetal force, uh, from object that, the object that move from linearly akan bertukar kepada circularly, circular motion due to the existence of the centripetal force. Jadi, Uh, the initial of the ball tends to, man, to maintain the motion in, in straight line. And when adanya this, this centripetal punya force, uh, which is the string that exit a force, then we call it centripetal ball, we follow a circular path instead. Then if the string breaks, ataupun I just release the rope, the ball will no longer hold the FC, the centripetal force dah hilang, and the ball akan bergerak secara straight line ataupun linear and dia pergi atas, dia jatuh baliklah sebab the uh, due to the gravity. Okay, that is the punya explanation, theoretically. Okay, next. Uh, what are the centripetal force actually? Apakah example-example centripetal force? Jadi kalau awak tengok kat atas ni, centripetal force is not a fundamental force. But the net force, dia adalah, dia bukan fundamental tapi ianya adalah uh, a force that we just label it. Okay, apa maksud saya dekat sini adalah, okay kita ada tiga contoh. Okay, yang pertama di mana I attach a ball with a string of rope and then bila I move it in the circular motion, we know that it has a tension dekat rope tersebut, dekat string tersebut ada tension and the tension is always directed to center. So where is my center? Center is my hand. Yeah. Jadi all the apa, tension tu semua ke arah center and we call it as a tension and this tension will be kita akan equalkan with the centripetal force di mana after this I will show you guys how to derive a centripetal force. 
this is the first example. Okay, the second example is the car taking a corner. So, bila bila kita tengok the the car, kalau you drive uh, on a roundabout, jadi kita akan nampak this frictional force yang hold the car so that it will be, it will keep on the track. Dia tak akan skidding uh, outside from the track. So, what is the one that contributes to the centripetal, uh, centripetal force? It is frictional force. Jadi kat sini, centripetal force dia, is equal, I, I put FC, eh, FC, so you know that FC is centripetal force, centripetal force is equal to the frictional force. This one, centripetal force is equal to the tension, okay? And you must remember that the centripetal force is always pointing to the center. Okay, and then the third example, uh, the satellite orbiting the Earth force. So I call it gravitational force. In mana chapter after this chapter uh, with other one. Okay, and it was always uh, centripetal force which is the gravitational force. The satellite akan uh, linear. Okay, the same goes to the car lah. Nanti car tu kalau tak ada. Oh yeah, ke? Sorry. Yeah, uh, I think my internet got a problem. Yang lain okay. Okay, sama uh, dengan sangkut-sangkut. Sangkut-sangkut juga. Sangkut-sangkut. Really? Sangkut juga. Uh, ulang nombor tiga. Alright. Okay, sekejap. Sekejap, I think I will use my hotspot. Okay, sekejap eh. Hmm, my internet. Where is my internet? Okay, thank you for informing. Kalau saya short sendiri pula. Sekejap. I will uh, hand, hand over my connection to my hotspot. Okay, maybe I'll be leaving this, but you just uh, stay in this meeting. Sekejap. All right. Okay, how about now? Uh, am, uh, is my slide is still there? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. saya punya yes. suara break tak? Tak. Okay, setakat ni okay. Tak. Clear. Okay, so kalau saya break kan, just, just, just let me know. Eh. Okay, and then for the third one, saya repeat balik untuk yang satellite. Okay, satellite orbiting the Earth. Uh, jadi dekat sini, uh, satellite tu uh, ada the centripetal force. We call it as the gravitational force. Okay, gravitational force ni is equal, uh, you akan belajar nanti lebih mendalam dekat lecture Dr. Ungku. Okay, so without this uh, centripetal force, nanti the satellite akan bergerak di luar orbit. Okay, so ada tiga contoh yang saya berikan dekat sini for centripetal force. Okay, how about the next one that I'll show you. How about a roller coaster? Okay, I'll play this. Okay, it's stuck here. Okay, so where is the centripetal force? Anyone? Centripetal force, the definition is the force that always point, pointing to the uh, center. Jadi, we know that the center of this curve, the curve is here. So, we know that the FC is towards the center. Okay, FC now is contributed to what force of this roller coaster? Okay, anyway. Gravitational. Gravitational. Okay. <laughs> Gravitational. All right. Lagi. Frictional. Frictional. Okay. Lagi. Force. Tension. Tension. Okay. Lagi. Saya pilih lagi satu. Kinetic. Kinetic energy. Okay, so kita nak equalkan centripetal force di mana centripetal force is always pointed to the center. Kalau gravitational, you mean the gravitational acceleration, it is not a kind of force. Dia dalam unit meter per second, dia adalah acceleration. So gravitational force salah. Okay, kalau frictional force pula, 
adakah frictional force dia sama arah dengan centripetal force? Kalau tengok dekat sini, frictional dia mestilah dekat the what we call it, the track kan dekat sini ataupun de, saya tak nampak yang ini saya tukar colour, okay. dekat sini maybe, ah, dekat sini. So dia tak sama arah dengan centripetal force, jadi frictional force salah. Tension, okay tension mana ada string kat sini, there is no string, so there is no tension. Kinetic energy, kinetic energy unit is joule, this is not Newton ataupun force. So what is the answer? Potential energy. Potential energy also, potential okay. energy also joule. It is not. The weight. Yeah. yeah, correct. It is the weight actually. So weight of this roller coaster yang, yang the same uh, direction with the centripetal force. So it is equal to the mass darabkan dengan gravity. Gravitational wrong. But the weight is correct because kita darabkan dia dengan gravitational acceleration. Alright, good. Next. Alright, okay so uh, dah, dah faham apa itu centripetal force, it is not a fundamental force, it is actually equal to the, it it follows the scenario macam kita tadi saya ada empat tension, frictional force and then gravitational punya uh, force uh, yang satellite tadi and roller coaster also weight, weight is also a kind of centripetal force. Okay now saya nak uh, derive uh, apakah formula that involve in centripetal force. So the object undergoes circular motion and experience uh, a centripetal acceleration as we did yesterday. What centripetal uh, acceleration is it always pointing to the center and we know that the centripetal acceleration is this formula. Okay is this formula. Okay, and then from Newton's second law, as I uh, gave you a hint yesterday, we use the second uh, law, punya Newton's second law, where force is equal to the mass time with the acceleration. Jadi centripetal force, the label is uh, F sub C, is equal to the mass, kita darabkan dia dengan AC. Sebab kat sini, uh, the force tu memang sama arah dengan centripetal acceleration. And we can uh, form form a, form an, an equation lah ataupun kita boleh satu formula of the centripetal force di mana it is equal to the centripetal acceleration darabkan dengan mass. So as easy as that. Kita darab dengan mass je daripada centripetal acceleration. Okay. Kita boleh juga form the centripetal acceleration in terms of the angular velocity where we know that centripetal acceleration is this one. Okay, and then the centripetal force, uh, the centripetal force Fc juga boleh di, uh, uh, we can form it uh, in terms of the velocity, angular velocity, which is equal to this one. Okay, kalau tak nampak, I will derive it here. Okay, for example, uh, ah, yelah, dia, dia, dia just darabkan dengan m saja, so tak perlu nak tunjuk pun. We, we know that Fc is equal to ma, right? Jadi kita darabkan dengan m saja kat sini. Then we will get centripetal force. Okay, and then the other one, I just want to show you the relationship between the radius and also the centripetal force. Jadi from this equation, uh, where centripetal force is equal to mass darabkan dengan tangential velocity to the power of 2 divided by radius, and then I I uh, bring the, the R here to the left hand side and make it as a subject and I bring Fc to the right hand side then the equation will be like this Fc and we can see from this relationship R dengan Fc kan atas bawah it is uh, it, we call it as a inversely proportional lah jadi bila R tinggi bila R besar Fc akan rendah so that's why lah dekat sini saya cakap the smaller the radius jadi the higher the centripetal force needed uh, then bila objek tu jauh from the center or it has a, a great length of radius jadi the force punya magnitude of the centripetal force akan berkurang. Okay, boleh dapat tak setakat ni? Boleh. InsyaAllah boleh. Cool. Next, okay. Bila adanya, saya akan terangkan lagi another terms iaitu centrifugal force. Bila adanya centripetal force, wujudnya centrifugal force datangnya daripada the Newton third law. Okay, anyone yang masih ingat what is the Newton third law sis? Action reaction. 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 Action reaction.
Correct. Okay. Every action got reaction with the same magnitude, but different. Different direction. Uh, direction. Yes. Different direction. That uh, same goes to the centrifugal lah. Jadi, if an object moving in a circle experiences an outward force. Jadi kita tahu kalau kita cakap dekat left, uh, saya punya left yang ini kan, left punya gambar centripetal force bermaksud when the car move in the circular path, jadi all the centripetal force akan uh, pointing to the center and the centrifugal force yang melawan dia menjauhi the center so dia akan show the center apa nama dia akan uh, the direction akan ber uh, will op, will oppositely to the centripetal force so this is fc uh, yang ini fc and then this one is f centrifugal okay i will not teach more about centrifugal because this is just uh, i just introduce you guys lah bila ada Uh, force yang terhasil dia akan ada the opposite direction action reaction. Jadi kalau kat sini we have the centripetal force is equal to m tangential velocity to the power of 2 we divide by r. Jadi f centrifugal the same magnitude but it just only in opposite direction. Negative mv tangential power of 2 divide by r. Okay, you just faham this thing lah. Okay, I'll show you two videos that we can see the effect ataupun kita boleh nampak lah the effect of centripetal and also centrifugal. The first video is, okay, I will, uh, sekejap eh. This one, I will delete this. Okay, I'll play this. This is just a drift video. Okay, uh, uh, he prank his dad. Uh, then dia buat drifting. Sebab drifting kan banyak dia drift and then dia buat the circular punya motion kan. Okay, I'll play this. I just want you guys to observe uh, mana yang you boleh nampak centripetal and mana uh, benda yang you boleh assign that as a centrifugal effect. Okay. Saya ada yang ada. Alright, I think I replay this part lah. Okay, I'll stop at this part. So we know that the car drifting like this, this direction eh? and then we know the, cent the center is somewhere here lah. Okay, I just want to uh, ask you guys. Okay, mana centripetal force yang you boleh nampak uh, from this video? Um. Yang dekat <laughs> cermin tu. Apa tu yang dekat cermin? Driver, driver. Ada dekat. Ah, pada dia dia buat apa? Terus. Ayah dia macam kecil. Tercak, saya nak tercampak ke sana. Dia macam ke sana. Okay. Ke kiri. Ke arah center, is it? Yes. Ah, so dekat sini you kena faham. Centripetal force is the force that always point pointing to the uh, center. Kita tahu center is somewhere here. Jadi kalau kita tengok ayah dia pun memang dah ke arah sana. Dia, dia terpaksa pegang the apa the, the the holder kat sana supaya dia tidak tercampak ke sana. So dia pegang that's why dia punya force pun ke arah sana. Then kalau you drive lah, kalau you drive macam you drift dekat satu corner, you drive and then you mesti follow juga badan you ke arah center. Okay, itu adalah observation of the centripetal force yang kita boleh nampak. Okay. How about centrifugal force? Wangi. Wangi. Oh, yang benda gantung tu. Yes, yang benda-benda gantung ni kan. Nampak tak? Dia, dia ke arah sana. Uh, this yang effects yang kita boleh nampak daripada centrifugal force. Alright, good, good. Kita tengok yang the second video pula. Okay, this uh, the jet, jet fighter punya apa pilot. Dia just pour a drink when and then dalam masa yang sama dia cuba terbalikkan dia punya Dan dia pergi terbalikkan Dan dia ambil ke jelas and then he drinks So I think I will stop uh, somewhere here. Uh, 
dan kita boleh nampak lah dia dah berada di atas dia terbalik macam tu okay and then the drinks is like that okay kalau you nampak kat sini apakah centripetal force yang you boleh uh, tengok yang you boleh observe Uh, dia ke darat centripetal force dia. Yep, okay betul. So, centripetal force dia memang ke arah darat macam tu. So the 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 what we call it, the center must should be here lah somewhere here. Okay, this is the centripetal force. Jadi kita boleh nampak yang apa? Uh, dia punya centripetal force dia tu buat hmm. air tu stay dalam cawan. Entah okay, satu. Yep. Secondly, the glass tak jatuh and also dia pun tak jatuh. Dia maybe lah pakai the belt tapi uh, kita boleh tahu yang this uh, jet dia takkan jatuh ke bawah due to the centripetal force. And what, how about the centrifugal centrifugal force? Dekat air. Air. Ya, yeah, dekat air, air ni. Ya, yeah, the air ni takkan jatuh ke bawah. Okay. Dia always ada centripetal force. So, this is contohlah contoh untuk centripetal force and also centrifugal force. Okay, so that is the, saya just bagi uh, theoretically, apa itu centripetal, apa itu centrifugal and also with the formula and you know that the centripetal force is must be equal to something and it depends on the scenario or the condition of the move, the circular mo uh, movement. Kita tengok soalan supaya you guys boleh lebih faham. Okay, this one I will not open the box but I'll show you how to solve this. And then later kita boleh buat uh, soalan. Okay, soalan pertama. A 25 kilogram girl is riding a merry-go-round with a radius of 5 meter. Let me change the color of the pen. Okay, the, the radius is 5 meter. And then uh, calculate the centripetal force. A mass is 25 kilogram. Okay, and the velocity is when you see at the unit, It is tangential velocity because dia adalah meter per second to the power of uh, negative one. Sorry, meter per second lah. Jadi, the centripetal force Fc is equal to m. Kita ada tangential, tangential velocity. Jadi, we use the tangential velocity to the power of 2 divided by the radius. Jadi, the mass is 25 and the tangential velocity is 6 to the power of 2. We divide by the radius is 5. Okay, so berapa our centripetal force? 180. 180 Newton. Okay, unit is Newton because force and force memang guna Newton lah. Alright, next. Memang simple, straightforward. Okay, uh, sebelum tu saya nak tanya. Uh, apakah uh, centripetal force dalam kes Mary go round ni? What is the example of? Dia slow-slow, dia dah takut dia nak cakap. Apa dia? <laughs> ah, apa dia? Friction. Tak dengar, Friction. tak yakin. Friction. Friction. Okay, betul. Friction. Ah. Yakin lah sikit jawab. Okay, kita ada merry go round and then kita tahulah dia ada, saya lukis satu pola kat sini eh. Dia pegang and this budak pegang and ada kaki. Okay, and then the frictional, uh, the centripetal force, we know it is always pointing to the center. We know that this is the center. Okay, jadi dekat sini frictional force dia datang daripada, eh, sorry, the centripetal force nya datang daripada frictional force. Okay, kat mana frictional force nya? Dekat tangan. Kaki. Yeah. Tangan. Kaki. Yeah. Ha, dekat tangan ada, dia memang pointing to the center, centripetal force. Satu lagi dekat kaki dia. Kaki dia pun dia akan center ke dia akan point ke pada, dia akan follow the centripetal force punya direction. Ha, itu dia punya key point, keywords dia. Kena follow the centripetal force punya directions. Alright, good. Next. Okay. The maximum speed of no skidding of a vehicle, vehicle of mass 750 kilogram. So mass is 750 kilogram. And on the around the bout of radius of 20 meter, And also the tangential speed is equal to 9.0 meter per second. And calculate the centripetal force on the vehicle moving. Jadi we have our equation for centripetal force 
is equal to the mass with time with the tangential velocity to the power of 2. We divide by radius. Jadi, our mass now is 750, all in SI. Okay. And then our tangential is 9 to the power of 2. We divide by 20 meter. Okay, so what is our centripetal force for the car so that it is not skid uh, from the track? 3037.5. Newton. 307. 307. 307. 37. 37. Oh, okay. 3037. 3037.5 Newton. Okay. So this is our centripetal force. Very straightforward. Okay. How, what is the cent, what is the centripetal force in this case? Frictional force. Okay. So kalau saya kalau saya draw the track. Okay. And then this is the center. And then this is the car. Okay. Where is the frictional force pointing to? The center, what the center? The center. Yeah, the center. Yeah, they are the same. They are the same with the frictional force. Eh, sorry, uh, centripetal force. They are the same with the frictional force. Okay, kalau you belajar daripada, uh, saya just nak uh, differkan dia dengan linear motion. Eh, kalau kita ada jalan jalan yang linear, and then the car is here. Okay, and then the kita tahu frictional force dia adalah ke sana, right? Sebab dia move ke sana. Ah, uh, tapi this case dia lain. Three frictional force is always the same direction with our centripetal force. I will do this for uh, more example in uh, tomorrow lectures. Di mana kita akan buat a level punya curve, the flat curve, also the car that on the bank curve. So saya akan tengoklah macam mana direction of frictional force. So you can uh, ingat the what we call it. The key points of this is it always point the same direction as the frictional as the centripetal force okay so uh, i hope you guys understand kalau tak faham you just stop me and just ask the question okay now i open for the question okay this is the kind of kita panggil dia apa nama uh, lebih kurang macam final exam lah dia tak guna information but uh, it give you how uh, di, uh, apa nama adakah you faham the concept of the centripetal force by using the formula. So the, the, the question is a car of mass M is driving around a circular track of radius R at a constant velocity of V and then the centripetal force acting on the car is FC. So if the car velocity is double, what happened to the FC? Okay, jadi saya akan buka. Saya akan buka the answer book then you may begin. Of you. Okay, so ramai yang juga yang jawab C, ramai, ada juga yang jawab A and majority of you jawab B. Jawapan dia B. Okay, kenapa maybe yang C ni dia tersilap kepada kuasa 2. Okay, so cara nak jawab this question, how to tackle this kind of question, kita kena form lah. Kita punya formula. So dia punya solution, let me open my blackboard. Okay, jadi uh, the first case, okay, case yang pertama dia tak double lagi the velocity, jadi we have mass 
and then we have the radius and we have the velocity and given that the centripetal acceleration is Fc and we know that centripetal, sorry acceleration, but centripetal force, centripetal force is equal to uh, m times with the tangential velocity to the power of 2, we divide by the radius. Okay, this is the case, the first case. And then for the second case, for the second case, same car, same same mass, same, same mass, and then same radius, only the velocity is double. So I put 2V. And what happened to our FC now? So we just do again, where the centripetal force is equal to the mass time with the velocity to the power of 2 divided by the radius. Jadi dekat sini, velocity dah tukar kepada 2V, right? And M darabkan dengan 2 velocity, 2 times of the velocity, initial velocity to the power of 2, we divide by R. Jadi dekat sini, maybe ramai yang terus kira 2V to the power of 2 is equal to 4, eh, is equal to 2V to the power of 2. No, it is actually equal to 4. Sebab 2 kuasa 2, V pun kena kuasa 2 kan. Jadi 4V to the power of 2, we divide by R and we bring 4 in front and then it is equal to 4 mv to the power of 2, we divide by r. Jadi, this is the original centripetal force by 4 times. Okay, this is the answer lah. Pipe 4 kali ganda of the original case. Okay, faham eh? Okay, uh, yang silap tu, uh, yang silap tu uh, maybe dia silap dekat, dia silap dekat kuasa 2. Uh, so, you kena kuasa 2 kan boost. Kalau for example, uh, 3 pi to the power of 2, ianya bermaksud uh, kalau ada in bracket macam tu, jadi ialah 9 pi to the power of 2. Kena this one we have to, uh, uh, kita kena kuasa 2 kan and also pi also we have to uh, kuasa 2 kan. Alright, next. Okay, you sit on the stool and stick your legs straight out in front of you and spin around. So if you complete three revolution in nine seconds and your legs are 85 cm long, so what is the centripetal force in newtons on your big toe and assume that the mass of your big toe is 35 gram. So I will restart this and you will, you can answer. Okay, so ramai yang jawab D, uh, I think the correct answer is D and ada yang jawab uh, B, C, seorang, A pun ada. So saya rasa maybe dia tak tukar the unit uh, of the uh, the big toe ni kepada kg atau maybe dia tak tukar 85 cm kepada meter. Okay, let me open my blackboard to show you the solutions. Okay, jadi dekat sini ada soalan uh, bagi, uh, sekejap saya cari balik soalan dia. Okay, the soalan uh, bagi that our legs, apa nama, our radius lah, the legs too is actually represent the leg, uh, the radius, sorry, the leg is represent the radius. Jadi radius is 85 cm and this one we just convert it into meter, we will get 0 0.85 meters and then uh, for the mass of 35 gram, we convert it into kg, then we will get 0 0.035 kg. And also there has a statement about the angular velocity. It actually refer to the angular velocity, but they bagi tahu complete three revolution in nine seconds. Okay, I will call a name and then I will ask the lucky one untuk bagi tahu apa maksud uh, three revolution in nine seconds. Okay, I feel like I choose this screen. 
Okay, ERA. Dia tak ada group pun. ERA. Siapa eh ERA tak ada group ni? Adakah ERA di sini? Calling for ERA. Tak ada. Tak apa, kita pilih warna lain. The same green. Okay, Izzat HA3. Izzat, can you open your mic? Ira Fazira, I don't know who's Ira. Izat eh, Izat H A tiga, ada Izat H A tiga. Yes. Ah, okay, ada. Alhamdulillah. Okay, macam mana you cari the angular velocity that from this statement three revolution in nine seconds? Uh, three times two pi per nine seconds. Okay, kenapa you buat darab dua pi bahagi sembilan? Sebab uh, one revolution equals to two pi, so because mm. there's one revolution, so we times by two pi. Alright. Okay. So seconds that we okay. What is the formula that relate to this one? The formula of omega, delta, angular um, displacement. Uh huh. Divide uh, by. Yep. Okay, so we know that this three revolution ni represent the angular displacement and also nine second represent the time. Jadi you buat tiga revolution, we convert it into radian and we divide by nine. So omega you dapat is, berapa is that? Uh, uh, 2.094. 2.094 KU value kan pi, tak ada masalah. What unit is, what unit for the angular velocity? Meter per second. Meter per second? Yakin? Uh, I need red, red per second. Yeah, radian per second. Alright, thank you Izzat. Okay, I'll call you, I'll call another name untuk kita proceed with this question. Okay, I will think I will choose orange lah. Okay, Mardia HB3. Yes. Okay, Madiah di sini. Okay, how to proceed with this untuk cari our centripetal force? Centripetal force guna formula MR uh, omega square. Correct, because we have omega right now. Jadi our mass is 0 0.85. Okay, and then the yeah. radius is... Eh, sorry, sorry. The mass is... <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. It's the, okay, not farming. Sebuk je yang... This phone, okay. Uh, the mass is 0 0.035. Okay, and then how about the radius? 0 0.85. 0 0.85. And our omega is this one, 2.094 to the power of 2. So our centripetal force is? 0 0.13 Newton. 0 0.13 Newton. Okay, so ada yang silap just now is maybe you guys did convert the radius and also the mass in uh, SI unit. So you just have to be very careful when uh, you want to calculate it, to calculate everything in physics, you have to convert ev every unit in the SI unit, okay, with the respective SI unit. Okay, thank you, Mardia and also Izzat. Okay, I think uh, uh, that's all for my uh, lecture for today, uh, which is centripetal force. And we will see a lot of examples that use uh, centripetal force for tomorrow until our end of lecture in lecture 8. Jadi, saya harap you guys faham lah. Uh, centripetal force is always uh, directly pointed, directly pointing to the center of the circle. Okay, before I end my class, any question from the floor? Tak ada, satu, dua, tiga. Okay, if tak ada, if you guys yang still lagi blur, still lagi cloudy kan, tak faham what is angular acceleration and what not lah, every parameter, linear quantities, uh, angular quantities, just please approach me dekat MS team. Okay, I will uh, help you guys, I will consult you guys. So, if anything, jangan malu-malu, jangan just keep it to yourself, uh, bagi tahu saya, then I will help. Okay, so if tak ada, I'll see you tomorrow for uh, level curve and also flat curve. I will upload the lecture note tonight and boleh tengok, boleh download 
and uh, so at least you guys ada sedikit uh, fahaman lah before you enter my lecture. Okay, uh, that's all for today. Uh, thank you guys. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Dr. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Have a great day, right, sir. All right, welcome.